welcome to the Donahue Group. We're delighted that you could join us in this award-winning show. <laughs> We've been priming We're the We're waiting pump for here. the award. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't received Still the award the quite mantle. yet, but when we do, we'll be sure to prominently display it so you can share with us our thrill and excitement, uh, along with other shows on Channel 8. So it's a great TV station, wonderful people behind the cameras, and so we're very lucky to be here. Joining me today is our usual cohort of ne'er-do-wells and do-gooders, Cal Potter, state senator, assistant. Do I get a choice? <laughs> I was going to say, which, which are which here now? I got a feeling I know how this is going to play out. In any event, Cal Potter, former state senator, and I won't go into the rest, Tom Paneski, uh, UW Sheboygan mathematics professor, and it is my understanding with an administrative position this Associate year. Associate dean now. Associate really? dean. Really? Yeah. Congratulations. And we'll try on this award winning show not to say anything to rob you of that wonderful position, you know, through scandal or whatever. Okay. The scandalous <laughs> Ken Risto. <laughs> <laughs> Still currently, Just sitting at, least, here. at least for a little while, the, my own business. the king of social studies for the Sheboygan Area School District. I am Mary Lynn Another Donahue, kingdom. or so I have been told, um, lawyer with O'Neill, Cannon, Holman, DeYoung in, uh, in Sheboygan. And so we're in our city show, our county show, and we have lots to talk about. I was not able to attend the Memorial Day Parade, which I had been looking forward to as our son called from Ashland, Wisconsin to indicate his ride had fallen apart. So we were 12 hours on the road on Memorial Day. Um, anybody attend? I was in the parade. Uh, All right. Parade. I was associate in the, dean? As a, no, no, no. As, oh. uh, I was a uh, Sheboygan early bird. Uh, I had a, a rotary. float, uh, the Rotary, the Rotary Club, and we were uh, sponsoring our, our new lobster uh, logo. We have somebody dressed as a red lobster, and uh, was that you? No, it wasn't me. It was somebody <laughs> else. I would have really missed seeing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a red lobster. Yeah, it's a red lobster. To be named, we're going to have to find a name for him. But we were in the parade, and uh, our red lobster walked down the parade, and uh, almost like the Shriners. <laughs> yeah, and so it was fun, and we handed out flyers for our lobster boil. And no little pieces of lobster to entice us to the. And and I asked people what a little, what a baby lobster is called and I they said I don't know and I said I, I, I don't know either so if anybody mm. knows what a baby lobster is called pup. a pup <laughs> so what is it? he's let's, making let's, this up as we go plug along it. let's plug the thing oh what gosh is I, it in the third week third week in July I don't I don't have the date believe it or not I can't recall this excellent I think it's the 24th though. or something 24th. yeah Where? excellent fundraiser at Fountain Park lobster boil forty dollars a ticket to uh, entertainment uh, supports uh, scholarships that uh, Rotary uh, distributes to uh, people and lots of schools. other good things yep it's a great club yeah. but I was in the parade uh, there were like 60 or 70 uh, entries so we were like 56 I mean that's as big as the 4th of July and uh, it really went fast because most people they had a couple bands and uh, it went fast and uh, we stopped at the Memorial or at the park Fountain Park the speeches were very good it was uh, fairly quick and uh, and the, what is it, 21 gun salute or whatever it is. And I hear the turnout was excellent. The turnout was excellent. It was very nice. I mean, what a, what a great way to turn nothing into something, uh, a, a silk purse out of a sow's ear. I mean, I congratulations to the vets groups and to the mayor, I think, who really, you know, brought the issue into, into sharp relief for people and everybody responded. So sounds like it was a good time. Yeah. It, yeah, it was a good time, and uh, it was a, uh, it was warm too. So I mean, it actually was a, a, n a nice day for a parade, a nice a nice day for an event. So the lobster got hot, but the rest of you were doing okay. <laughs> well, uh, I wore a long sleeve shirt, red, to uh, syndicate. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little warm running around in the crowd, handing out flyers for the lobster boil. Uh -huh. so. Well, some other good things happening. At, you should uh, get a dunk tank with the lobster for the event. Because you put the lobster in a tank of water and you're cooking it. Yeah. You should actually have an actual dunk tank. Oh. For you uh, and others, maybe. Oh, and they could maybe sell, sell, sell tickets, you know, yeah. dunk, yeah, dunk, dunk, uh, dunk us. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we, we should uh, re kind of refocus. Uh, yeah, let's yeah, just right. refocus yeah, our conversation here. I just here. had this brainstorm. I want to share it with Tom right away because I'm you? trying to impress the associate dean. <laughs> okay, did you have like a lot of coffee before you came here today? I, uh, uh -huh. Not much more than usual. No, not much more than usual. Okay, well, just like calm down a little bit and we'll, we'll see if we can move forward here. Um, 
But if anyone does have any ideas for the lobster or the dunk A name, we're going to have to introduce them. We're going to have to get a name. Yes, on. please contact Ooh. the associate dean. Pincher, um, maybe. <laughs> just, Crab. Just, just to bring the, the level of conversation either up or down, depending on your perspective. Um, there have been some good things happening at the city, uh, recognition of both at the city and the school district of uh, conservation efforts. And um, it's nice to see uh, municipalities going green, as it were. What's been happening at the school district? Well, they created a position, uh, I guess I call them, I call them energy czar, and uh, that person is uh, really focusing on uh, finding very, you know, very small, normal, day-to-day -day ways to reduce, uh, reduce energy. Uh, consumption and uh, so a lot of us I mean across the district we're turning off printers and turning making sure computers are turned off at the end of the night rather than having things on standby you've got televisions in a lot of the high school classrooms and they're in standby and you can turn switches off on walls and there's been an effort to close doors during the winter I think there's been real efforts to turn the heat down uh, you know it's April 1st and there's no more heat no matter what happens to the temperature um, so that's been a little bit of an interesting experience this summer, this uh, spring. Um, and a lot of uh, use of, uh, if there are overhead fans in some classrooms, use fans during the winter, which is something that's sort of counterintuitive to a lot of us, but by changing the direction of the fan, we get the heat that's up on top down below. So mm. lots and lots of little things, and just being a little more aware of not this, leaving things on at night more than anything else. And this may be apocryphal, but it is my understanding that um, Charlie Sykes had heard about the in energy efforts at the school district and had made fun of it saying that, that can't possibly be true. Someone from the school district called and explained everything that the district is doing and presented hard facts about reduction in energy costs and so forth and Charlie actually apologized uh, on, on air. So I, I think... A rare moment, or a rare moment when facts were brought to bear and Charlie's opinion changed. It, it doesn't happen that often, but there you go. I yeah. thought that was pretty cool. And I think that Jean Quayunis, a current mm -hmm. alder person who is heading up the city sustainability task force, is, uh, at least according to, I'm very allergic here today, sorry for the sneezing and coughing and rubbing, but um, Jean seems to be um, looking at more than just token kinds of things, but sometimes even the token things will save you money. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. And uh, that hasn't quite come into private businesses yet in terms of energy reduction and so forth, but... Uh, well, there's a business out in Plymouth, it's Orion, mm -hmm. that uh, has become a very large business, and their business is to go into a business and retrofit the lighting and various electrical and energy consuming entities that are in that business and showing how that what they're paid to do this is recouped within a very, very short period of time, and there are a number of businesses that have availed themselves of their service and this company, is, their stock, I guess, is doing very well. In some of our remodeled rooms here, you know, it's motion activated right. lights. If there's yep. no motion, they just shut off. Yeah. I've been in a meeting, it was kind of a quiet meeting, and all of a sudden the lights went out. <laughs> so we go, and they go back on again. We don't have those kind of, we don't have those kind of meetings in the district. <laughs> yeah. There's usually somebody throwing something at somebody. Or pointing at somebody. A motion detector. Yeah, all the rooms at North and South are, or, are organized along the same line, so if you leave your office lights on or you step out of the room for really not much more than a couple of minutes, and the lights go off, and then they come back on when you... You walk in the room, it's made a big difference. Not a bad idea, and particularly with gas at 3.94, and we're among the cheaper uh, communities in terms of uh, gas prices. Uh, I think things really are changing, at least to some extent. Mother Jones, just to go off subject for a little bit, had a long, a whole magazine devoted to um, alternative energy, and what was on the what was legitimate, what was a little questionable, rating different alternate energy ideas as their, you know, the cost of production. I think ethanol has basically been shown to cost more to produce than it, you can sell it for and, and those kinds of things. So, I, I mean, these are just interesting times in terms of sustainability, but I think the fact that it's cool and that people are doing it and that businesses can save money at it, I think is just a huge step forward. Well, you know, I, I, I wonder what's going to happen to the city and the county budget. You know, you got all the sheriff vehicles and all the police vehicles that are out on the road. You got Our all busing the, costs are going to be and absolutely the busing astronomical. Costs, and you got all the public works vehicles. Uh, 
uh, they're out regularly where, you know, so the fuel budget's going to have to take a big jump. Mm -hmm. and so, Although, and I don't know how that's going to show people up. People like Roger Lies are now retiring um, superintendent, assistant superintendent for business services, the finance guy, and just one of the best people in the world. At least at certain points when I was on the school board, he was buying um, gas futures so that, um, it, it, not risky particularly, but just good planning that with the idea that prices will always go up to, you know, it's kind of mm -hmm. like buying a forever stamp <laughs> that, you know, you've got a fixed cost and, and really did save the district uh, a fair amount of money at, at, at various times. So it'll be interesting. Well, I just want to talk a little bit about um, both a, a newspaper article that was fairly short-lived, but then a, a letter to the editor that appeared recently. And this all circulates around that uh, controversial position of the mayor's administrative assistant. I'm not sure that's the, the title. Um, held by Susan Hart, but who's not really doing that job now because she's the interim HR director. Um, I was surprised um, at Steve Sharp, um, one being hired and two being deciding to only stay on the job for a day. Um, I don't know quite what was going on there. Um, I do think that the mayor on a temporary basis has to fill that position. One, he clearly needs it. Um, didn't, and didn't uh, I mean Ed Surig now is an alderman, so he doesn't have he does not operating in his uh, uh, personnel director mode or human resources mm -hmm. mode. But wasn't there some sort of condition uh, on benefits? Uh, you know, he's a Steve Sharp was a retired fireman, and benefits kicked in. Now, if he took this job, he was going to lose some benefits, mm -hmm. and so then he had to be. I mean, <coughs> Surik was aware of those kinds of things uh, because he was director for eight years and I think I thought that was part of the discussion that uh, there was some benefits that he sharp would lose because he's back to almost full-time uh, when he was retired and yeah um, I'm not sure it was that so much as just um, I think that there were rumblings about how how it all happened and I mean it just seems to be fairly poisoned in terms of filling that position I don't know what you do I mean, Susan Hart is the interim HR person. Well, which ties in the letter to the editor was essentially, um, why aren't we hiring the human resources director, and why doesn't you know this this other position get filled? And it's because the, both the city and county have agreed to talk about shared services, and so Susan Hart is in the interim HR position, and from what I hear, doing a fine job, um, but that administrative assistant position remains open. Um, and I, I mean, I don't think until the city and county either decide they can do something or they can't. Well, you're going to have to set a deadline at some point where you say, okay, we can't come to an agreement, but we're going to hire or we're going to put out a, a call for an administrator or an assistant uh, human resource person. Well, I think the city county um, discussions have, a, you know, a bit of a flavor of you know, Mideast peace talks. Um, you know, their <laughs> progress is made, and then, um, you know, there's certain personality flares, and, and then progress isn't made mm. anymore. And so I, I guess I, I would be um, both hopeful and a little discouraged at the same time about anything ever really happening. But the city is not actively looking for a human resources director. I mean, it just isn't um, because there's an interim who's doing a good job, and they're looking and exploring with, you know, with the county about ways things can be mm -hmm. shared. Uh, it, it's interesting. I don't know, I don't know what the answer is to it, but... Uh, um, Did they get a finance director, by the way? Yes. Um, I, that's good. Is he started, or she? Yeah, uh, the young man's name, and I say young because he is young. <laughs> of course, almost anybody is young in my view these days, except, well, no. Um, <laughs> and um, he's... Thirty just sitting here. Three, I believe. <laughs> Aging Thirty-three, well. <laughs> <laughs> 33 and uh, from uh, a suburb of Duluth, and uh, uh, very affable. Um, has a, a great skill set, I think, and oh, um, you know, anxious to move the city forward. And um, so I think you these change positions, all the computer technology, get new stuff, and bring that up again. Because it took a while to find a suitable candidate within the price range of the city. Though, it did. Right? 
It did, yeah. Um, but the, but the, the city has not even begun the process of filling that human resource person, though. Right. Well, there was the big brouhaha right. when, when uh, the mayor appointed Susan Hart. And, um, right. And so since that time, Susan has been acting. She's withdrawn her application to be HR director, but is acting as the interim. And it's my sense probably doing some of those administrative um, assistant jobs as well. She's you know, pretty energetic about it. But well, now the city does have the, the new IT person, Tudor Lee. He's going full guns. I mean, he's like shot out of a cannon. And so the, the, I think the city has made more progress computer-wise in the last two months than it had in the last, well, number of years. Mm -hmm. Let's put it that way. Um, we've moved up away from 1985. And uh, how far, much farther, I don't know, but, uh, but it should be good. interesting. Good, that's so, good. I don't know, city politics is, it just never does seem to calm down particularly, does it? Well, you have these different camps, you know, the Perez camp, and then you still have the old Schramm camp, and there's the recall folks that are still out still there. Still out there, yeah. And, you know, you're seeing it with the people who are already saying they're interested in running for mayor. And so when any type of these decisions come up, you're going to have somebody mm -hmm. coming in with a contrary decision or, or, or opinion and a letter to the editor just to, so this pot is just ready to boil yeah. and it's going to and during, really boil during the next election. Oh, I think so. I think it's going to be, be a hot one. I think That's it'll right. be very interesting. Yes. Yeah. And strategically, maybe the mayor didn't necessarily want to announce quite so early that he was running for re-election, but he did. And so I'm surprised only two people have come out. Um, well, only one formally, Bill Longman. Mm -hmm. uh, the word is certainly that Bob Ryan will be doing that. And, uh, it is very early. I mean, we're talking about a year? the next election. Yeah, the next election is the major presidential election. That's not till November. And right. so to talk about after that, it's, it's just too early. Well, I remember back in Susha's time, uh, Richard Susha, uh, you remember Eddie Darko? Remember the name I Eddie the Darko? Name. Mm -hmm. right. I was a new alderman. Eddie Darko was the new alderman. And after council meetings, we would m go down to uh, we, Susha's bar or something, have a drink. And then one time I went down with him uh, and Tim Lorenz, and we stopped at Harmony Bar, have a drink after a council. The next day, Tuesday, was the final day for filing uh, nomination papers for mayor. This was January. We had a meeting in January, council meeting on Monday, and Tuesday was the... And having a beer, Eddie said, you know, I think I'll run for mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Next day, he got or his nomination. One or the other. <laughs> got his nomination papers in, and it, well, he gave the mayor Susha a, a, a run for his a money. run for his money, yeah. Oh, funny. But see, that's how, you know, you got plenty of time to decide. <laughs> you know, I think those... I think those I think those casual days are gone, don't you? <laughs> I, I'm not sure we would uh, necessarily get anything like that again, but uh, uh, interesting. Well, um, also um, just changing the landscape a little bit. And while I don't blame them one bit, and I'm going to ask our librarian uh, to talk about it, we now have, I think the headline was even, library police. You can <laughs> now go to jail <laughs> for not returning your your books and Judge Delahunt of the Municipal Court does ha, is not at all shy about throwing people in jail for not paying fines. So, oh dear, is this? Uh, what do you think? Well, I think uh, things that people don't return aren't cheap any longer. No. If you want to buy a book, you're talking mm -hmm. about twenty-five, forty-five dollars, and people sometimes take whole armloads along and they don't return them, and they've literally got hundreds of dollars that they've absconded from the library, which means the library needs then to replace those materials when someone wants them. And because they're on the card catalog, they're supposed to be there. And if somebody has literally stolen it by neglect, if nothing else, uh, they ought to be held accountable. I think people have maybe got this image that it's a 10 cents fine or something. You know, there's nothing, what's the big deal about re not returning a, a yeah. library book or something? But I get you get to a point where some scoffall has got to be held accountable. And how do you do it? How do you convince somebody who's got a pile of books in their house that they should return, that they ought to do it? Some people, you've got to hit them alongside the head to get their attention. Like, I don't know how else you do it. Mm -hmm. you, do, you send them notices saying that they have overdue books and would you please return them? 
And then if that doesn't happen, their name goes to a collection agency, and the collection agency tries to recover, recover the books. And then if they can't, well, the next step is sure. the police. <laughs> well, I think a lot of you know, people who have not used the library facilities for a while don't perhaps realize, too, the library uh, loans out CDs and DVDs and uh, a whole host of yep. things yep. other than just books. And so, you know, some people said, you know, why would you even keep, you know, some folks, why would you even keep books? <laughs> you know, yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> books? Yeah. You know, it's like leaving an unlocked <laughs> car with a bunch of books in it. Who would steal books? But there's a lot of other things that they loan out as well that uh, can, can run up a big bill pretty fast if they have to be replaced. Right. And I do think... It's a public trust. Yeah. You know? And I do think that at a certain point, you, when you have, just like the county has a large number of collections out in the city and so forth, it... it you do have to take some some aggressive steps to to start collecting. So, but, and I think uh, in most cases it's not going to be one book. It's going to be after a process that Tom has, you know, yeah. explained. Plus, it's going to be something of substantial amount of accumulation, five hundred dollars or whatever it happens to be, and that gets to be theft <laughs> to a certain. Point. It really is. You know? It really is. I mean, it's negligent. It's I don't think normally it's not intentional. I mean, my boys. I always said my lovely boys who adored the library and were there all the time and yet could not get their things back on time. I just proudly stated that we were great supporters of the library. Um, in many in ways. so <laughs> many ways, you know, <clears throat> through our taxes and donations that we made and then the fines that my boys had to pay and continue to pay. And Michael's credit record is, is terrible because of all the <laughs> fines that have been sent to the collection agency. And of course he eventually does pay them up and now we really would like him not to get arrested, <laughs> so <laughs> we, we will urge him to continue to do that. But uh, um, other small things, um, uh, uh, Paul Gruber, Dr. Paul Gruber, great guy, has um, suggested that um, the city um, enact an ordinance uh, banning the use of cell phones while you're driving. Um, and I understand. In the hand, I think. Where in, in the hand. Mm -hmm. You could have the car, right? You have For the headset. Hands off. Yeah. Hands Bluetooth. off. Bluetooth. Hmm? The Bluetooth. Is that what it is? But don't you still have to dial? Or, you know, press the buttons? We're I getting think... to the point where, no. No, you just say call <laughs> such and such. Yeah, depending on the facility, you know, depending yeah. on what you have in your car. Yeah. Okay. But it was if you're actually at one of those little things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, in the last three or four months, while well, I've been driving through the swing streets on 8th and Indiana Avenue and a couple other places like that, I have narrowly missed hitting three cars because they blew through stop signs, and sure. all three of them yep. were on the phone at the time. Yep. They went right through the stop sign, yep. and they People were on the telephone, and they were just oblivious. On the phone, they're just oblivious to what's yeah. coming. Yeah. 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 There's a whole lot of studies now that have been done that show that you really, it's unlike listening to the radio or some other things that you might be in the car. This is a whole different set of tasks yeah. Yeah. that really do take away from your ability to, to, to drive safely. Even worse than eating a quarter pounder, huh? Oh, yeah. so, Putting on I, your makeup. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I guess I really had to stop doing that. I guess aren't there some cities in uh, Wisconsin yes. have yeah. have already <clears throat> established those ordinances? Several have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And so. I don't think it's so unreasonable in this community like Sheboygan, uh, where you have ample parking off street to pull over to the side of the road and continue your conversation without going into a heavy traffic situation, talking on the phone. I don't think that's that much of an inconvenience. It really is the rotary situation in particular. I mean, you really have to be kind of alert, and I've discovered you really have to use two hands <laughs> to turn around the circle, and so it, it really does help to have, so instead of <laughs> moving the, <laughs> the hand around in the jerky fashion, well, it'll be interesting to see um, what the city council does. I, I think it's a great idea. Um, it's, uh, it's just too dangerous. And uh, so we'll see what happens with that. Well, it, it at least keeps, uh, it keeps the city council busy and, you know, doing productive things. Um, I um, also wanted to note that the room tax is up 10% uh, for the first quarter, which um, Blue Harbor, it's my sense, is not doing well. Um, and, um, and yet, for those revenues to be up that much, I mean, essentially means more people are in hotel rooms. It is an 8% tax, <clears throat> and Sheboygan is one of the lower ones. You know, you go to some cities and you're paying 11, 12% tax, you know, so you're 
hundred dollar room is suddenly a whole lot more expensive than you had, than you had uh, anticipated. But it's a great revenue source, and you're dinging the people from out of <laughs> dinging the people from out of town. So, I am. Um, uh, what's the hotel downtown across from, from the bank? The new one that's going up is called the Grand Stay. Are you talking about the old executive oh, inn that's been remodeled or refurbished? It's been remodeled, so oh, those, oh, okay. those rooms are on, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So yes. that's, that could add well, to the road revenue. rates are probably up, I mean, considering that energy costs have gone up and all the different costs mm -hmm. of just maintaining a hotel, yeah. labor costs, I'm sure. So if you've got an 8% you know, increase of a, a higher rate, you're going to collect more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. Well, yeah. I am. The, the new hotel is going to be open. I was at the Business to Business Expo yesterday that the Chamber of Commerce did uh, at UW Sheboygan here, which was terrific. And one of the um, exhibitors was the, it's called the Grand Stay Hotel. And uh, that's the one going in on the parking lot. And I went up to the woman who's the general manager, very affable, and she's very cheerful. And they're opening, I think, July 16th, she said which since the brick seems to be going on mm -hmm. <laughs> brick by brick, I mean, it's not going on mm -hmm. in uh, at great speed. Um, who would ever thought that it'd be hard to find a parking place in downtown Sheboygan? Mm -hmm. Remember the vast lots of parking lots? You know, I, mean, there were, I mean, you could have parked an army <laughs> in downtown Sheboygan. Now, um, not so much. I think it's going to be, uh, um, Parking places are going to be a little bit more dear, and um, which is great. I mean, it really mm -hmm. shows that there's that there's good business going on, and and um, and things like that. So, um, and just finally, we just have a couple of minutes left, um, noting the reopening and the moving into of Landmark Square. And uh, I, uh, anybody here know anybody who's moving in? Ruthie. I, <laughs> Ruthie I do. Ray. I do, I I do too, Ruthie but I can't Ray come up with a name because somebody just told me they were yeah. moving into Landmark. I just I know Lucy so Dalla many. Yeah. Yeah, so many. That's who it is. is that who it it's is? Lucy Dalivali. Uh, yeah. Dalla yeah. yeah. My yeah. former colleague at South High School, Spanish teacher, Spanish, long time Spanish yeah. teacher. And now over at Lutheran and some other places. Oh, and there are just a ton of people. That's who I ran into her at Yonkers uh, this last week. Yeah, she was devastated Down by, by the birds. Yeah. <laughs> I was at Yonkers. Yeah. <laughs> And All so right. now we're, we're getting back into the lobster boil <laughs> <laughs> mentality here. Yeah. I lobster. think that our... Everybody I'm looking forward to the lobster boil. <laughs> I just don't want to jeopardize our award-winning show and, you know... I think, I think this is why we got the award. <laughs> yeah. You get the lobster award. For this <laughs> the, the, the big claw award. I'm but, with you, Tom. Uh, in any that's event, good. I do think, again, just the level of building that's going on in... In, in the downtown is pretty pretty amazing and um, so it's it's good stuff and we're on the move and we are on the move we'll say goodbye and hope to see you again uh, sometime soon